Hi, everybody. Welcome to our. Oh, sorry, Irvi. <laughs> Go to. Eager to also welcome everyone. Welcome to our, our up to date session for November. Um, I have that, according to my clock, it is 10 30. Uh, so we're going to get started. We've got uh, a fair number of people who are logged in, so that's great. Um, and let's, I guess, get the show on the road. So, uh, hold on. There we go. Um, today, we are going to talk about up to date, obviously. Um, we're going to just, just kind of give you uh, a quick overview of what it is, how to access it. We're going to talk about um, how library uh, services from MyNet fit in with up to date. And um, Orvi's favorite part is a critical appraisal of the content in up to date. Um, so before we do that, um, we always like to kind of make sure everyone's on the same page. We've got um, our, our online platform is GoToWebinar. If you find that the control uh, rectangle is, is gone, uh, you can get it back. There's that little flower type symbol at the bottom. Um, and you can you should be able to see actually uh, the, the ribbon on the bottom of, of my screen. So I've got like my email and uh, internet and, and Excel and PowerPoint, and then there's that go to webinar. Um, so if you find that you, you want to send us a message in the chat, uh, what have you, but you can't find it, that's where you go. All right. So speaking about the chat and the, the control box, um, sometimes also if you want to visit, it, you can click on this orange arrow and it'll kind of shoot off to the side um, and then you would click back to get back to um, the full view. Okay, so for questions, um, if, if you want to ask us a question, you can do so at any time. Um, depending depending on, on if we're on a roll or not, we might wait to the end or we might just kind of break and, and answer your question. Um, but you enter it into the box and uh, press send and then we, we will be able to uh, monitor Okay, so MyNet. Uh, if you don't know what MyNet is, um, basically it's it's library service that's been contracted from the University of Manitoba, and anybody who works for um, Manitoba Health Seniors and Active Living, uh, if you're in one of the health regions, particip participating health regions, um, mostly the rural health regions, uh, WRHA for example, and Brandon, they have their own uh, situation set up. And if you're a fee-for-service physician anywhere in the province, then you're eligible to use MyNet. Okay. As I said, I'm Christine, and Orvi is is uh, my colleague. She, she introduced herself <laughs> earlier. Hi, everybody. <laughs> um, but we've got some other people on the team as well. Um, so we've got Gabe, um, and we've got Cheryl. So Cheryl is, um, if you ever request an article or something like that, and you you. Uh, MyNet email. Uh, Cheryl's the one that you're dealing with. Um, yeah, so we are all here and, and happy to help you out. Okay, so up to date. Up to date is, is, is kind of a big deal. Um, it's very popular with physicians all over the place. Um, and we have a provincial license. So what that means is that if you are a MyNet patron, so like I said, the fee-for-service physicians, um, people at the, the health authorities, or if you're at the University of Manitoba, cancer care, um, you can access up to date uh, without having a, a subscription of your own. So that's that's pretty great. Uh, basically, it is um, it's kind of it's kind of like a, a a reference tool, right? It's what we call a clinical decision support tool, and it covers like so many topics <laughs> it's got a, t like 10,000 and plus topics um, there's information relating to drugs uh, there's patient education um, information as well that you could print off and give to patients um, they've got different medical calculators and uh, different like illustrations there's there are some videos too um, not a ton but there are a few and so th th this included in one one package Okay, so our first poll um, is whether you've actually used UpToDate. Um, so I am going to 
attempt to quickly start our poll here. Um, and it's, we just want to get a quick idea of where everybody's at. So we'll give you a chance to reply. Okay, so, oh, okay, I think, I think everybody has replied. Um, so we've got a combination. We've got a bunch of people who have and a bunch of people who haven't used up to date, um, which is, which is great. Um, they've actually introduced a couple of, of, of new things, which is um, kind of nice and interesting. So we'll talk about, about that in a bit. Um, but like I said earlier, if you have questions or, um, oh, we, we have a question. Oh, well, thank you very much. Um, so, so yes, we'll, we'll keep an eye on all of, all of the, the questions and comments that come in and we'll uh, talk about them either in the moment or at the end, depending on, on the situation. So, all right. Thank you for taking our poll. Um, now, in terms of how to access UpToDate, um, it is, because it is a subscription item, like it's not available to the general public. You can't just, you know, go on regardless of where you are. If you are at um, like a, a RHA facility or something, you know, somewhere where there's um, a computer network that's recognized, so like you're at Manitoba Health, um, you're at Cancer Care, um, you're on the University of Manitoba, uh, campus, that kind of thing, um, it will recognize that that is a, a authorized access and you can just go to uptodate.com and you don't have to log in uh, or anything, you can just start using it. Um, if you're like me and you are currently working from home or if you're in like a private clinic or something, um, there is an extra step. You do you do need to log in with your MyNet library card um, and you would do that at the MyNet website. So I'm going to switch over real quick. Okay, so um, it's it's fairly straightforward. We've got the the MyNet site here, um, and if you look on kind of the center area here, we've got this link to up to date. So you would click on that, and then it would prompt you for um, a login for your library card, right? If you don't have a library card yet, not a big deal. Um, you can contact the the, the MyNet office and um, we've got a little box on the side here about what kind of information you need to, to give us and then we'll set you up. Okay, all right. So up to date itself, when you, when you get in, like you can see here, I've logged in as myself and it says University of Manitoba. Um, it's, it's, it's pretty minimal in, in terms of in terms of the look, right? Um, you've got like a, a contents view, so you can look at particular segments of of up to date. So you can look at um, the patient education, for example, if you if you wanted to go specifically there, and then you can kind of um, go through the different topics, right? So if you're looking for stuff about um, infections and vaccines, then you can kind of follow the links until you until you get to a monograph that you're interested in. Right. Um, likewise, we talked about the calculators earlier. Uh, there's the drug interactions um, and uh, up-to-date pathways, which is new. Now, um, if I'm going to, I'm going to go back. If you, if you just want, you know, like, you know your your Google-like experience when you type in some terms and it gives you some answers, then that's available also. Right. So we've got our search box here, um, and let's say, I mean, a lot, a lot of the stuff in UpToDate is clinical, um, but I'm going to look for spiritual health just because it's something different. Okay, so I type it in and I say go. Um, and the results that come up are fairly, fairly consistent with what we would see with something like Google, right? So we've got an overview of spirituality and palliative care. We've got some stuff about complementary and alternative treatments for anxiety, symptoms, and disorders. Um, and the list goes on, right? Um, you can narrow things down using this little um, facet at the top. So right now it's showing us all. If I wanted adult inf really <laughs> information relating to adults, um, 
then we could do that. And if I want pediatric population, we could do that. Um, patient information, again, if I click on patient information, it, it, I can get to things that are specifically um, written for patients. Um, okay, so this is an example of what the mon monographs look like. Um, and then there's the graphics as well. Okay, if, you, if you're not really sure which one you want to have a look at, so maybe you're like, oh, cultural aspects of palliative care, that sounds promising. Um, over on the side here, you can kind of hover over that arrow and then you can see what the table of contents are. So you can see what they talk about. So um, that we've got some definitions and background. You've got um, impact of cultural issues on patients and families. And there's some um, more specific topics there. The impact on clinicians. Um, tools and strategies for providing culturally appropriate care. Um, and then we've got at, at, at the bottom, you know, the links to guidelines, there's a summary, there's references, and they've also got um, some, some tables and stuff, right? So you can say, that looks good, I'm gonna have a look, okay? All right, um, I don't know if, if you guys would have noticed, but at the main page, we've also got kind of front and center, they have links to COVID-19 things. So for example, some guidelines and patient edge, education, uh, questions and answers, that kind of thing. But you could also type in the search box, COVID-19, and they've, they've put together a homepage, which is something that they haven't done for other topics. Um, so if I go to the COVID-19 homepage, they've just kind of gathered all of that information together in, in one handy place, right? So they've got, you know, things like clinical features, diagnosis, um, there's management, prevention, um, if you're dealing with special populations, um, all that kind of stuff is over on the left. And then they have um, additional things on the right. So um, they have kind of a, like a, a what's new um, so in their, in their what's new, they talk about universal testing in nursing homes. Um, we've got a featured graphic, but you can go to all the graphics. And so this is a, a table or algorithm, um, the guidelines, patient education and question and answers as well. So it's all the same information that you could find in other ways. It's just kind of gathered together for your convenience. Okay. Um, now if you are going to be using um, up-to-date like on your phone or if you want to um, use up-to-date to track uh, CME credits which is something you can do so as you as you read things it can keep track um, but only if you sign up for an up-to-date account right and now this is separate from your library card this is something that's between you and up-to-date um, but if you go to this register button here on the side um, it'll it'll create an account for you, and if you log in, oh, it remembers me. Excellent. Um, it'll show you um, profile. So I, I I don't log in a lot, so you'll see that I, I don't have a lot of stuff in my history. So I've looked at overview of spirituality and palliative care, uh, practice changing updates, um, and you can have. Um, a little account of your CME. So where's the CME? Yeah, so I've got 0.5 CME credits. Go me. Um, but you know, if that's something that you you like to take advantage of, I know for uh, a lot of folks, if you have um, continuing education requirements for your licensure, um, that is that is a handy option. Okay. Um, now I will point out that you do need to kind of renew your up-to-date account uh, every 180 days. Um, basically, they just want to make sure that everybody who has access is, is still part of the group that is supposed to have access. Um, so if you are at a health region or cancer care computer, one of those recognized sites, uh, sorry, not sites, uh, networks, then you can go to up-to-date and then log in like I, like I did. And then it'll kind of be like, okay, yeah, you're good for another 180 days. Um, if you are offsite or if like you're using it on your phone, um, then you would need to go in through the MyNet page and log in with your library card as an extra step before you can log in with your up-to-date account. 
Okay. And I know it sounds it sounds tricky. <laughs> and in like 180 days from now, you're gonna be like, what did she say? I don't even know. Um, but not to worry, we've got on our, our website for up to date, um, we've got a whole bunch of information. So if we if we click on that, you can see we've got, you know, step by step instructions of how to register. Um, you can have have a little bit more information about you know what up to date is, all that kind of good stuff, and you can always contact us too, um, and we'll we'll do our, our best to help you out um, and troubleshoot if you're having problems or walk you through the process. All right. And Christine, if anyone is having trouble uh, doing their renewal, should they ever um, uh, hesitate to contact us? What a trick question! Never hesitate to contact us. Um, Okay, it looks like I've just got uh, just I don't know if you saw this, Orvi. I have spied in the um, the questions. Uh, how do I miss oh yeah, this? I responded to them. Oh, you did. Okay, excellent. So thank you for that. All right. So I'm gonna I'm gonna switch uh, switch it over to Orvi, and she is going to talk about some of the more fun aspects of, <laughs> of up to date. Oh, everything about up to date is fun. Thank you oh, so much. Um, so I think you stop. Do you stop sharing or do I just uh, that is an excellent over as the presenter? Um, you make me the, oh yeah, here we go. I'm taking it. Oh, you're good. Excellent. Okay. And I just have to make sure I am sharing the right. Hmm. How do I do that now? Mm. Hmm. People can see my screen, I think. Oh, why do they always change it on us? I'm not sure, but my my screen looks different also all of a sudden. Okay, just give us one second here and we will, oh, I know, here we go, there we go. And I'm just going to, there, sorry about that. Okay, we are rocking and rolling now. So, um, yes, there we go, all right. Some of the really cool things. I think they're all pretty cool. Uh, so I'm just exploring this in a little bit so it's a bit easier to see. Now, one of the really cool things that is in up to date is up here um, at the top in the blue ribbon, which is drug interactions. And I'm going to show you a really simplistic example. Um, but uh, this is particularly useful. I know pharmacists really like it. Or, um, and certainly uh, physicians or anyone prescribing, if a patient particularly has a long list of medications they're on, this is really helpful because you can just pop them all in and then find out if any of them are going to interact with each other. But I'll do a really simplistic example. So I've put in here, I've already done my search for, oh, I've already done it, I'll just show you. Uh, so I've got, I searched here for lisinopril, which is, um, is a medication for hypertension. And then I'm going to say, then I'm going to put in licorice, okay? And it took that. Then, so I want to know if, um, if uh, so this, er, I'll tell you a little story. Uh, if you've been to our sessions before, you know I like to tell stories. Uh, so my mom is on a high blood pressure medication. I don't know if it's this one or not. Um, and she really likes to drink licorice tea. And one day she paid attention to the licorice tea box that said, don't be drinking this if you have high blood pressure. And so this is an easy way that you can then do an analysis to say, uh, well, the box tells me not to be, not to be drinking it with, if I have high blood pressure, but is it really safe or not? And so we can see here, um, at the very top, it tells us the different categories of interactions that exist. So the red, the red box with the X in it says avoid combination. Um, and then it goes down to, uh, you know, the B, which is uh, no action needed, or A, which is no known interaction. This one has come up as C, which is a monitor therapy. So I can click into here. And very, um, I mean, I know it looks like a lot of text, but it's actually quick to read through. And it, if I come to the summary here, it says the severity of this is moderate and the reliability rating is fair. Well, that is not a very strong endorsement. 
So I can read through here and I can read through the specific herbs um, that, might, um, that might interact with this drug. And then I can um, read about the hypertensive agents interacting members. And then I can come down to the discussion, which says that caution is advised. So certainly I would say to my mom, mom, you should probably talk to your doctor about this. And you should um, also maybe, you know, uh, stop drinking it until you're able to talk to your doctor. But then I can come down here and she says, oh, but Orby, this is the only tea I have in my house. We're in the middle of COVID. I only go to the grocery store once a week. I don't have any other tea. Can I drink it? And I mean, then you can have a conversation about that. Um, but then if I come down here and I say, well, the evidence rating on this was only fair. What does the actual evidence on this say? Um, and that's what the what the physicians or the person that might maybe that's the nurse practitioner that my mom goes to. So then I can say, OK, well, there's this article that's um, herbal products that may contribute to hypertension. I'm going to click on this link. It takes me to a uh, citation in PubMed, which is our favorite uh, health database to search. And I can read through this now if I so I have got the abstract here. And I look and the full text link, I know it is not a free link. This is going to ask me to pay it $40 or something. Um, and so if ever you get to this point and you're like, gosh, I would really just like to read this article. Do not ever pay to read this. And also do not ever go without reading the full text. Um, this is a service that MyNet provides. All you need to do is uh, grab this information here at the title, the authors, the journal, oh, I have to grab it a little bit higher, the journal information, the PubMed identifier, copy that, pop it into an email, send it to minet at umanitoba.ca, and we'll send you the full text. It probably will take a couple of business days, um, but it saves you that $40, and Cheryl is very quick in getting it to you. Um, yes, Christine. Oh, sorry. Um... That is absolutely a legitimate uh, and preferred way to, to, to do article requests is to contact yeah. Cheryl. Um, if you are in PubMed, rather than doing the copying and pasting, um, mm -hmm. you can, uh, if, you, if you look up at the top, you can, you have options, right? So you can email and if you click on that, um, it'll, it'll email the, uh, Oh, do you want to be? A, is it a robot? Um, you can say, um, "I am not a robot." Yeah, so I can send it, it. Yeah, yeah, I can pop it in here. Thanks, Christine, for that reminder. I always forget about this. Um, just just got to make sure that uh, there should be an option to provide a note, so you tell us who you are, because otherwise we just get something from PubMed and says this article, <laughs> and we don't know who to send it to. So, yeah. Yeah, I thought it, it would let me. Okay, yes, you they, can definitely use that. Maybe we'll get back to everybody on this because yeah, it, it used to have a little box here um, that said maybe if I type in something, umanatova.ca. I spelled it wrong. That's okay. Hmm. Okay. Um, send send the email see. and see what happens. Okay, I'm going to type it in properly though. Okay. Okay, and I said it, I'm going to do it as the, okay. Does it give you an option? No. Oh, the new oh. PubMed. There's a new version of PubMed. Some of it is still clunking away. We will message um, the National Library of Medicine and tell them that we want to include that. Yes, so that email will come through and Cheryl will say, gosh, somebody is interested in this. Um, so maybe for the time <laughs> being, uh, I mean, you can still, it also, maybe it's my browser or something. You can click on that as long as there a way, uh, there's a way to say, hi, Cheryl, it's Orvi, Orvi Dingwall. Please send this to me. Here's my email. And um, then we can do it. Sorry about that. That's okay. It used to be one of those things. And so we, this is why we are always doing these webinars is because things are always changing. Um, yeah. And so I just wanted to point out one more thing here. Uh, about whether if you have hypertension, you can be drinking licorice tea. I went through this and I was really surprised because though it says herbal products that may contribute to hypertension, um, it seems really quite general. But then when 
you read into it, uh, the purpose of this study was to review the herbal products that are known to cause hypertension and thus may play a role in post-operative complications. Well, my mom isn't post-operative. She's just like hanging out at home. Um, and so again, this is when we would, um, you know, send my mom uh, to healthcare professionals. And this is where you as a health, uh, health professional, if you're reading this and you're going, well, gosh, I don't know what to tell Orby's mom, whether she should drink her licorice tea or not. I mean, probably we're telling her, just find a different tea. There are so many to choose from. Find ones that aren't related, aren't related to blood pressure. Um, but uh, you might say, well, gosh, up to date was a great starting place for this. Appreciated that drug interaction element, um, but I want to know more. And I, I'd like a, a literature search not about, uh, you know, licorice and hypertension uh, in surgery or post-operative. I just want it for like everyday life. We can absolutely do that literature search for you. Um, so you can just send an email to mynet at umanitoba.ca or you can come to our MyNet website and it's just loading here. And then over here on the right, there's request a search. You can click on that. It gives you a form, you fill it out. Um, yeah, there's a PDF form. Um, and, or you click right here in the middle, uh, this search request online form, you can click on that. You fill in these fields and then we can uh, do a deeper dive about the risk of uh, drinking licorice tea and um, hypertension. So, oh, and that's just loading. There we go. I'll just let it display. Yeah, it's a really straightforward, just your name and your email and phone number, just your contact info, and then the things that you're interested in. So a great service that MyNet provides for you. So back to up to date. Um, there is this, Christine touched on it a little bit, but there's this new thing, uh, which is called up to date pathways. So I'm going to click on that and it lists these things, uh, the headings are hematology, hospital medicine, infectious diseases, primary care, it goes on and on and on. If I list them alphabetically, it turns out that right now it's only two topics. They're both COVID related. Uh, so I can click on one. These look really cool. Uh, they, it's just a sort of a different, they really show the pathway with which uh, um, uh, you as a provider may be guiding patients or a way that um, uh, patients may be guided through the system. So you can see through this uh, flow chart that it talks about, um, uh, you know, different, different elements uh, like if we come down to the bottom here, it's talking about inpatients and outpatients, and are they taking anticoagulation, yes or no, and it just sort of takes you through in a more visual way instead of just a wall of text. Um, so it's a pretty cool, pretty cool little uh, new feature and new way to present information. Um, we haven't yet got information whether this is just a COVID thing or whether they're going to expand to other topics. Um, I would think that they would expand, um, but it's it's pretty neat. So if you wanted to look at some different pathways of treating COVID or, or managing COVID patients, um, this is a really cool new thing that exists. And, oh, sorry, uh, I, I was just yeah, going to say, ahead. like, if you were to click on um, one of those boxes, like it got to the end, but that's not really the end. Like you kind of pick where your Ooh. person lies and then it'll add right. more information at the bottom. So you can kind of follow it through. It's like a decision tree or a logic tree that was the word I was those were the words I was looking for it was logic tree yeah so if I click on um inpatient I manage them inpatient or outpatient should I be admitting them or not so I'll click on this yeah and then you can see the it's turned blue so I've already you know pathway scope required tests warnings and exclusions documented or strongly suspected thromboembolism and then I come am I going to manage inpatient or outpatient and then over on the right, it tells me about these different things and I can say, answer yes or no. And yeah, it's just an, a very interactive way to um, work through this pathway. Anything else, Christine, that you wanted to mention about that? 
It's all right. I muted myself. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we're having a day here. Um, not not a lot. It's just it's um, a different way to to work through the information, uh, like Orvi says. And if if that's the information that you need, then that's great. Um, I think it would be super cool if they did have additional topics, but we'll just have to see. Yeah, stay, stay tuned. Okay, I'll take us back to regular up to date. And another thing that um, Christine mentioned was about the patient resources. So again, we'll just kind of stick on our hypertension um, on our hypertension example. So uh, you as a clinician might know a lot about hypertension, um, but you might have a patient, let's say it's my mom still, that she comes in and she says, you know, I have these, some questions about my high blood pressure. Well, there are patient resources that you can print out um, or that you can email to your patients. Um, so I just look at the options here. Um, so there's uh, emergencies in children and pregnancy, high blood pressure in adults. So that sounds good. I can click. So you'll see there's actually, this one is called the basics. Um, and it just really gives you a high level overview in easy to read um, accessible language. Uh, there's also, so there's also um, often advanced ones. Um, this list is just currently displaying um, the basics, which is fine. Uh, they're available in Spanish, which is, of course, because this is an American product. Um, but I can click on this, and yeah, it's just, it's if you're looking, you know, if you know that this patient, this is a better option than saying to your patient, you can go home and Google this. Uh, this is something you could give them or send to them um, right away. So just what is high blood pressure? How can I lower it? Can I do anything on my own? And then there's a bunch of other, other topics. So these are really nice. Um, it's a nice feature to build in. And like I said, sometimes it's just really basic like this. And for some topics, there are, they call them the beyond the basics. Okay. Um, the next part is one of my favorite parts, which is, is up to date, actually up to date. So I'm going to take you to neonatal circumcision, and I, I'm going to click on the risks and benefits. So patient has come in and they say, uh, we've just had this baby boy. Should we circumcise them or should we not? What does the evidence say? And so then, um, you know, we've got our headings on the left-hand side and in the middle. We're just going to go down to the place, this place here where it says, in 1996, the Canadian Pediatric Society issued a clinical practice guideline, and it states, um, you know, the overall evidence of the benefits and harms of circumcision is so evenly balanced that it does not support recommending circumcision as a routine procedure for newborns. And there's this reference here. So I click on the reference, and I think, well, gosh, um, 1996, that was, um, that was a while ago, uh, and surely, there is something a little bit more updated. And if everything was evenly uh, balanced in 1996, is it still so balanced right now? So I'm gonna scroll all the way down to the reference list. Um, and, or, sorry, no, that's not true. Um, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to come up to the top and I'm gonna say, well, did they, did they miss something here? Or like, when was this last updated? What's going on here? And so I come up to the top and it tells me that the literature review is current through October, 2020. And I think, oh, well, is the Canadian Pediatric Society really not updated their, their guidelines since then? Um, and then it says this topic was last updated in January of 2020. So up to date is constantly um, screening for literature and looking at updates. And though there's certainly been this, what this tells me is, uh, there was an update in January of 2020, and they kept screening the literature through October of this year, but there wasn't anything really substantive that changed or that required, um, uh, required a difference. So when I came across this, uh, being the librarian that I am, I naturally went to the Canadian um, Pediatric Society, and I'm going to look on the newborn male circumcision, 
here it is, I'm gonna click on it. Is it still the 96 version or is it a newer one? And this always happens when I'm teaching, my computer takes a while to load, there we go. So here we are at Canadian Pediatric Society. Um, this is their position statement. It's newborn male circumcision. Uh, this was posted in September of 2015 and it was reaffirmed in 2018. And so when I first found this, um, it really kind of drove me crazy. Um, it still kind of does because I think that up to date should include in it um, that the, the newer version, um, I think that sort of their policy is that they, like this information has, they were reporting that since 1996, the Canadian Pediatric Society has held a position on this. Um, I personally would have linked to something new, but again, this is the kind of thing, like UpToDate is a great tool. It tells you, hey, the Canadian P Pediatric Society took a position on this. You can then message us and say, um, hey, Orvi and Christine, is there any, are there any newer guidelines on this? Um, so as with any, as with any source you're ever looking at, whether it's an up-to-date entry, a guideline from the Canadian Pediatric Society, or something you found on Google, um, don't always just, you know, take that advice or take that recommendation at face value. Always be critical, um, always be doing a critical appraisal and uh, diving a bit deeper. So that is that one. Um, now, I meant to ask Christine earlier because she came across this new thing, which is practice changing updates. And Christine, I don't even know how you came to it. Like I had to search it. Was there a different um, way that you yeah, so it or? In the in the table of contents, like if you click on that contents with the down arrow. This, oh, this one. Yeah, it's in ah. one, one of the categories. Ah, okay. So yes, not in the across the crossbar menu, but in the drop down here. Yes, so practice changing updates. This is also new. Um, and it has, you can see on the left, then the topics that it outlines. So um, if you wanted to see, um, so our understanding, again, it's very, very new, um, is that, you know, because cardiovascular medicine is here, that there was um, a pretty substantive practice changing update that occurred. Uh, the same here with infectious diseases in obstetrics, and there's an oncology one, et cetera. Um, and so this is something very new. So if you were looking to, uh, you know, ramp up your CMEs or to, um, if you're, if you practice in one of these areas, uh, or if you were just looking for, you know, what are the new updates um, without having to scour through tons and tons and tons of evidence, um, this is a really great quick way to see um, where have major updates um, occurred. Let's just click into one of these cardiovascular updates. Um, so it's about rhythm control strategy for high risk early atrial fibrillation. So some new evidence there. And then um, uh, the obstetrics one is healthcare workers at risk for HPV exposure. Um, this is pretty neat, pretty cool. Um, one more thing to look at, just as we're thinking critically about uh, what's in up to date. Um, let's look at hypertension again. I'll just pop this in, which is is up to date evidence based. And I'm just going to click here. And when we talk about being evidence based, we can think about our evidence pyramid, which at the top. Um, the sort of gold standard for evidence-based are um, our systematic reviews and randomized um, controlled trials. And the lower down on the pyramid we go are so our expert opinion. And so this one here, um, this one is authored by two, two physicians. Um, and then there's some section editors. And they do include a disclosure here. Um, you know, about anything that they, any money that they're getting or, um, oops, or any influences that they might be having. Um, but, uh, I mean, evidence-based, uh, 
to authors does not always scream to me that uh, it is really evidence-based. So I'm always a bit skeptical if it's one author or two authors. That to me sounds like expert opinion. Um, but if you're ever interested in um, UpToDate, uh, they do have lots of information about their editorial policies, how they grade their evidence, um, what their review process is like, and certainly if you've ever been to one of their presentations, they do talk about the rigor with which they evaluate the evidence and all of the different people that they involve in that process. Um, so that is, uh, again, it's just something to consider. So I'm going to flip back to our slides here. Oh yeah, here's the, they list out the different, um, the different elements of their editorial review process. So the bottom line for, for what, we, what we consider to be the bottom line um, is that up to date we know is the preferred clinical decision support tool for clinicians. It's really easy to use. Uh, one thing maybe we didn't mention is you can put in sort of the common language, like I typed in, um, or you can type in um, sort of the medical terminology. So I typed in hypertension. I could just as easily have typed in high blood pressure. It would have given me the same results. So it's very accessible. Uh, it's very comprehensive and it's really easy to use. And um, the advice and recommendations, like I mentioned, they need to be considered and appraised the same as you would any information that you're getting from any source. Now, what happens if Christine mentioned, you know, there's over there's there's thousands upon thousands of topics that are included in up to date, but it doesn't include everything. And sometimes, so I am I always say, if you're searching it up to date and it's got something on your topic, awesome. Um, it doesn't have everything. And so if there is more that you, or if you search for your topic and it's not there, or if you need to go deeper into it, um, you can just contact us to do a literature search and we're happy to do that for you. Okay, we're gonna launch our second poll as we um, come to the end of our session. And I've got all these things open. And so can we see it? Oh, yeah, it should be there. It is, yes. Oh, great, okay. Um, yeah, so almost everyone has voted. We've, we've sold you, whether they say, or maybe people are saying like, well, I already used it, I already liked it. I just wanted to know a little bit more. So um, that is great. Thank you for responding. 100% of respondents said that yes, definitely. Um, they are going to try up to date. Um, and so just a very quick summary to finish us off. And if you have questions, you can pop them into the question box. You're also welcome to contact us afterwards. Um, so when you originally access up to date, you do it uh, if you're on site at work or if you are remotely connected, um, you're using a remote connection, uh, or you can come in through our library. And then if you, like Christine said, if you wanna use CME or if you want to use up to date on your phone um, or if you just wanna eliminate the process of having like to log in um, to the library or log in through your VPN to your, um, onto your secure network and then log into up to date, you can just log into up to date. Although every 180 days you need to go through that process. And we know that the double login is confusing and it's easy to forget how to do it. So please don't hesitate to message us and we're happy to walk you through it. So um, Christine, anything else that you wanted to add or that I maybe missed? Um, I don't think so. I think we've, we've pretty much uh, given a good overview of up to date. Um, I, I, I do encourage you to ask a question if you've got a question. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's really great to have so many people uh, come out and attend. Um, so thanks, thanks for participating. Um, we we uh, we don't have any questions yet, so I okay. guess we can we can yeah. hang out. Well, for and a if you minutes. sorry, I didn't mean to talk at the same time as you. Uh, and if you enjoyed today's session on MyNet's website, 
We've got uh, uh, recordings of a bunch of our um, sessions that we've done earlier, so you can check those out. And, oh, somebody's asking that they have a personal account that they paid for. Can they get a refund or do a transition? So you'll have to call up to date and, um, and discuss your options with, with them. Um, and because uh, they manage that account, but certainly you are eligible uh, for the account through this. And this drives me crazy when they um, see somebody with a Manitoba address and they don't advertise to them that we have uh, this license that includes you. So I encourage you to contact up to date uh, directly about doing that refund. Good question. Okay, well, we scheduled this session until 11.15 and um, I've got 11.14, although Christine, that was interesting. When you said it was 10.30, it was only 10.20. Got like issues with our standard time here. <laughs> <laughs> I have 11.16, so I don't know what's going on here. Okay, well, um, we'll hang out for maybe one more minute in case there are any uh, lingering questions. And again, we thank you so much for joining us today. We will be following up um, with the slides we used today and oh. with a short um, uh, short survey just about how, how you found today's session. So thank you so much for coming. On the page of MyNet, there is a search for PubMed. Can I access without emailing? Oh, yes, absolutely. So PubMed is um, free for anyone to use, and you can have a shortcut on on your on on your computer, or just go to uh, PubMed.gov. Um, and it's just that it um, to get the full text of articles. Uh, not all of them are freely available, so you can absolutely search it. A bunch of stuff is freely available. Um, but yes, you don't need to email. We just have it on our homepage, so um, it's it's uh, an easy way to remember how to get there. Okay, we will say goodbye for today. Take care, everybody. Bye. Thanks for coming.